Having already taken a look at some cheap surge protective devices like this generic Chinese one with so many problems it's not even worth talking about, uh, I thought I'd take a look at a really expensive British one for typical British consumer units or distribution boards. And this one is interesting because it's double pole. It uh, protects from uh, live to neutral and earth. And it also has this uh, feedback thing. And if you look at the bottom, it's got little pins that stick out of here that go in through holes at the bottom here. And it will actually tell you if the unit has been removed or if it's actually tripped. And I can hear when I put this in, I can hear a slight click of micro switches. And this connect comes out so you can basically uh, wire it into a feedback system that warns you when the protection has failed, which is quite useful. I should hope it would have nice features because this thing has a current list price of over £92. Compared to the one that looks identical by Wilex, which is just another rebranding of the same unit probably, uh, which is £80, I think, and British General, who sell one for £30, and even MK are a bargain about £35, although their unit is wider. But having said that, that might be, might be a good thing. So here's a bit we're interested in. It's this bit here. I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to open. I can see a little latch here, so we'll shove this spudger into it. And I, I want to mention I did not pay. I did not pay £80 for this, or £90. What was it? £92, which is about 115 American dollars. Uh, I didn't pay that for it. I bought it on eBay. Someone was selling random electrical items, and this was one of them. This is not coming out. Let me try and jam a screwdriver into it without impaling myself in the process. If this fails, this is very light to impale me. If this fails, I shall pause momentarily while I try to open this up. But I'll just kind of break this seal, and then uh, I can, we can pull it apart together. One moment, please. Well, that took unreasonable force, so this is not going back together soon. That's all right, let's get down and have a close look. In the process, I took a wee sneak peek inside and saw there are little soda uh, uh, bits, the, the release mechanisms, the, the over-temperature mechanisms, the safety cutouts that fire these pins up. So I've got the soda iron on. I've also pre-drilled these so we can open that after as well. So if I slide this out, we have an odd arrangement here. We have a small metal oxide varistor on this side, just sandwiched in. Uh, well, let's get those screws out. No, let's trigger the mechanisms first, because there's the meltable link on this side, and there's a meltable link on this side. The live seems to go up through this large metal oxide varistor, link across, and it goes down to the other side. And then, let me just double check this. This goes in like this. So... The earth connection is going to this little one, and the neutral connection is going to the big one. I wonder why they've used different sized ones. Well, cost and space, probably. But the current uh, flows up these pins. Well, it's AC. The current flows via these pins through this uh, mechanism here, and these little green flags that say everything is okay, when the red thing goes up, it physically pushes those little flaps up and out the way. So let's do that. Let's trigger it. So I'm going to pretend this one's overheating by putting my soda iron on it like this. This could take a while. This is taking a while. Hold on, let me wet it with fresh soda. Uh, I have fresh soda here. I shall put a little blab on like that. And we shall overheat it. I wonder what temperature this triggers at. So it's heating. It's heating. It's not triggering, is it? It's going to take quite a temperature. It's got quite a mass before that triggers. That's a bit awkward. It's like waiting for paint to dry. Yeah, that's not happening, is it? Okay, tell you what. Let's try the other side. This one may be easier. So I'm going to wet the soda iron again. I have to make at least one of them trigger before I take it apart. Let's try this one. Let's see if it pings soda everywhere. No, that is quite a high temperature, I think. It is kind of melting, but it's having to heat the whole metal oxide varistor, which is the opposite, because normally the whole metal oxide varistor would be heating it. That is not... It's triggered. So it's now gone up, and it's pushed the green flap uh, into the side, and the red is now the most prominent bit. I take it that's hidden by the window. 
Well, let's push it in and see what it looks like now it's tripped. Here's what it looks like once it's tripped. Oh, the little green thing. Oh, any red replaced. So the green is still there, but there's the red showing right. Okay, that's that resolved. Right, and also that pin, the red pin has pinged in. Now I can't get this back out again. Splendid. Oh, no, I really have. Jammed it shut again, haven't I? Let's see if I can not stab myself in the process of getting this back out. Spudger, spudger, spudger. Get the spudger in and prize it out. There we go. Right, let's get the rest of it to bits. I may have to melt that other solder link to actually do that. Or I can just uh, undo these screws here. Do I have a suitable screwdriver? Do I have a suitable screwdriver? I think my suitable screwdriver is high. This is because I've been away so long, everything is disorganized. This will do. This will do. So here is one plate connecting to this metal oxide varistor on the earth side with its little mini one. Is that smaller than the one in the cheap, generic, knockoffy type thing? Hmm. Definitely smaller than the one in the... Oh, it is loose. In the... Oh, it pops right out. That's quite nice. It's a little metal oxide varistor. Uh, it says Epcos. Oh, I'm going to need a magnifying glass to read that. It says Epcos 620. Uh, hold on. Let's see if I can make that light up. Epcos 620. Okay. And now that red one is pinged up as well. Let's get these bits out of the way. And take a look at them. Oh, there is the little braided bit going up to that. Right. So we can now theoretically hinge this one up and take a look at this big thing, whatever this is. It's a big flat metal oxide barister. Oh, that's a monster. I think it's dipped in a resin. Um, is this going to come off with an uh, application of a kniff? Oh, this one also says... Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say up course. It says... E-U-Y-A-L-E-C U-Y-A-L-E-C 34SK431 uh, The 431 um is the voltage 430 volts. 34SK34 I'd normally expect to be the size. Uh, yeah, reasonable enough. So 34 square. It's a square metal oxide varistor. Let's see if I can peel some of this off. Or is it? It is. It's actually. It's baked on. Oh no, no, maybe it's not. Am I going to stab myself? It has been done before. Is there any point taking this off? It's revealing a big metal plate, which is probably soldered onto either side of the metal oxide varistor. Yeah, this plate is just soldered on. So this is basically a square slab of the material with this plate just soldered onto the side. And if I peel a bit of the end off, you'll see the ceramic -y stuff. If I can peel, peel a bit of the end off. No, it's not going to peel off, is it? No, nope, no, nope. it's mated firmly onto the ceramic. But just imagine that it's this stuff inside. Rightio. Now we've seen what's in that bit. Let's get this open. This is where it's going to ping apart. It's going to ping, because it feels like it should have little spring-loaded things in it. Let's use force. Use the force. I recently saw a picture of Darth Vader sitting in a toilet with use the force. I thought it was quite funny, actually. Uh, is this going to come out? Is this going to come out? Yes, it is. It's I've got a little circuit board there with micro switch at the look of it. Up. Hold well on. Get out. Oh, I've just lifted the module out. Oh, just bend that up like that. And lift this out. It's a little circuit board, which might be glued in. Oh, no, it's actually, it's two parts here. Because the it is two little micro switches here jammed uh, between 
uh, two parts. So I'm going to have to split this here as well. Split it without splitting fingers. Oh, this has still got uh, most of a rivet going through it, so that's not really going to help. Tell you what, one moment, please. That was very hard to get out because the whole housing was such that the it looks like the actual switches themselves have been sat into place in the plastic housing and then the circuit board put up and soldered. Quite well put together. I've also discovered something else. The common connection here is the neutral. Um, and uh, I'll show you. I'll show you it in the schematic. That's the best bet. I'm glad I didn't pay full price for this. That would have been that would have been a very expensive video. Yes, glad I didn't pay the full whack for that. Here is the schematic. Let me zoom down this. So we'll start off with the metal oxide roosters themselves. The neutral connection has a thermal fuse, and then it feeds the end of both of the metal oxide roosters. There's a big one, and there's a small one. The big one then goes straight to live. So that if this one starts heating up, uh, it should trip the neutral connection and sort of uh, break the circuit. Though it would technically mean that there'd be some protection between live to earth, but there's also a thermal fuse there. However, there is also a thermal fuse in the earth, uh, and the neutral goes through that therm that thermal fuse and feeds the live one and also the uh, earth one, which is the smaller one, and then it's got that thermal fuse. The switches are quite clever. This was probably one of the most sophisticated bits of it, really. Well, not really. It was de deciding the size of these. I mean, this is a monster, this Metal Ox Everester. It's a really big one. I wasn't expecting that. And I guess, really, the chance there being a significant voltage between neutral and earth is fairly low. It's more likely to occur in TT-type systems. Um, but uh, that could also happen when you have the failed... Um, uh, electrical distribution system where they lose the combined neutral and earth, the TNCS. Uh, it's a really common failure these days that suddenly all the houses in the neighbourhood will become live with respect to general earth. It's not a good thing. Cable joints, they're not necessarily well designed. Anyway, here's the switching mechanism. You've got the common connection comes in and these are the two switches and in the green position, everything is good. In the red position, one of them is tripped and it's bad. So the common comes through, links through this uh, good switch contact, loops across, goes through this good contact, and then goes to the good connection. So as long as the switches are in the right position, the common will be connected to good, and it shows that the surge sort of arrestor is still in circuit. If any of them trips, any at all, the common in this instance, if this one had tripped, the common will go through the red and it will go straight over to the trip. But it all, also, because it's tripped over, it will break the circuit over to the good connection. So it decisively shows from common to tripped that one of them has failed. If this is the one that, that trips, uh, then you're going to get a connection through here. It's going to go across to here, loop through, and then it's, because it's tripped over, it's not going to go out good. It's actually going to go out tripped again. It's a very clever interlocking system. But there we have it, uh, the surge suppressors. They're something that is being mandated nowadays. I think it's more to protect against huge expenses of the utility industry having these cable faults and uh, so that the cost can be deferred up to, up to the users instead when it blows up their expensive little modules. Not that people will check that the indicators in them are good. But um, it's something that's been mandated these days, and when you mandate something, then they can charge whatever they like. So they shouldn't really be that expensive. I think the, if anything, the uh, British General one and the MK one represent good value. They could be, in the sense that that's a replaceable module. I'm not sure how much it'll, well, you can buy the whole thing and just pull the module out and plug it into the holder. It might make sense to choose their distribution boards at this point in time, just because it's more cost effective to change components like that. But there we have it, uh, the inside of a double pole British compliant surge protection device.